Hello everyone, so this is the part two on the tic-tac-toe game that we are building on Figma using the latest advanced prototyping features. So in this video, I'll be covering two things. The first one is basically a mistake that I made in part one, where I actually edited out the part where I showed you how to link frame one with the frame two. Basically the part where the player can choose if they want to go with X or O. So a lot of you people have put in the comments below that this part is confusing. So I thought I'll just cover it in this part two. And the next thing is on how to draw the line on a winning scenario. So either the row is filled or the column is is filled so in this part we'll be seeing how to do that as well and just to keep this video a bit quicker i thought i'll just use the file that i already worked on rather than showing everything from scratch and before going ahead if you have not watched part one make sure to watch that or else this would be confusing so the link for the video will be there in the description or on the card in the top right so without any further ado let's jump straight on my figma screen and get started so the first thing we'll be covering is how we link the first frame with the second one so this is pretty simple so for that i'll just jump to the prototype tab here and we'll go to the link that we added to this so i'll click on this one right here and we'll see on click what we are doing so on click we have to do two things here the first is we need to tell the system which is the current player right so for that reason i'm setting the current variable to the value x so if you remember in the part one we created a variable called as current player which was basically set to empty and then we are setting it to x right here because uh, we want the current player to be x so this variable basically tells the game that this is the current player which can either be x or it can be o so for that reason on click of this we are first setting the the current player to X and then we are navigating them to the next screen which is just navigate to the uh, next screen which is game because the frame name is game here so that is the name uh, that is the reason you see game here and this could be instant or with an animation whatever you want and similarly with O on click of this we are just setting the current player to O and then navigating the user to the next screen we are just doing two things w one is setting the current player to whichever uh, thing you're clicking here and then navigating to the next screen so that is covered and now jumping on to the second part where we'll see how we can create those lines once the player has won. So for that reason, I'm again jumping back to the design tab. And here you can see that I've created multiple lines here, right? So there'll be eight scenarios. Three are the vertical ones. So you can see one, two, three, these three vertical ones, three horizontal ones and two diagonal ones, right? So for each of those scenario, I basically just created a frame. You can use a frame or a rectangle, whatever you want. So if you can see here, I just created eight frames here. And also the naming, I've followed a particular naming convention here. So you can give your own naming convention, whichever is convenient for you. So I just name this C1H because we are starting from the C1 cell and this is the horizontal winning line, right? And if you see this one, it's starting from C7 cell, that is this one, and it's going diagonally. So I mentioned it as C7D. This is C1D because it's starting from C1 cell and it's going diagonal. So that is a simple naming convention that I followed. You can follow your own thing. So once you have created this, the design part here is done. The next thing we need to do is create local variables. So once I jump to the local variables tab here, so once I click this, you can see that these were the variables that we created in part one. So these are for playing the game and finding the winner. So you can see these were the different string variables that we created. But now we need a set of new variables. For that, I'm just gonna create a new collection. You can add it here itself, it's up to you. If you want to maintain it as a new collection, you can do that as well. So for that reason, I just went here and said create new collection and basically created a new collection uh, that is winner that you see here. So this one has a couple of more variables here. So for each of this line, I've created a corresponding uh, variable as well, right? And when you create this variable it basically has to be a boolean variable so it's true or false so for that reason you create boolean variable you just uh, click on create variable and you use this one right so you just click on this and then you can start creating boolean variables so for each of this line i've created a corresponding boolean variable here right and i set everything to false here so as of now just remember this part here and now let me just close this and once you have created those variables you have to assign those variables to these lines for that i'm just going to click this one c1h and in this i icon right so on the right side on the layer part if you right click on this eye icon here you'll get this option to assign a variable to this particular frame so for that reason we are what i've selected here is c1h i'm going to assign c1h variable that we created so it gets turned off right that is because if you remember the local variables that we created were all false and for that reason it's taking the same value here as well so i'll assign everything of this uh, to the corresponding variable that we created so this is c7d i'm just going to right click here and choose c7d there you go and I'm going to choose C1D, right click and choose C1D. Just going to fast forward this part. 
Okay, so now we have basically assigned everything and it got turned off because of the local variable. So if you want to see that in action, I'll again go back to local variables. And if you see here, once I turn this on, you can see them turning on, right? It's basically assigning this value to the particular frame that we assigned it. So now we'll just turn it off and now we'll see what logic newly we added so that this works, right? So if you remember for each of the cells, we have added a lot of logic. So I'll just choose the cell one here. So I'm going to choose this one cell here and go to prototype and click on the interact interactions that we added. So these were the interactions that we added. If you remember, this is the first one is basically to set the value into the cell. So this was for that. I'll just close this. There's no change in that. The change is only in these uh, logics or these scenarios that we added, right? So there were eight scenarios each for each line, right? So I'll open the first one. So this scenario was basically uh, to find if these three values were equal. So if these three values are equal, we basically need to turn on the C1 H line, right? If you remember this one, so C1 H line has to be turned on. So let's see how we can do that. So this one, the logic is going to remain the same. The condition, whether we are checking C1 equal to C2 and C2 equal to C3. So that remains as it is. And if that is true, you're setting the winner player, the current player to the winner player. So that's how we get to know the winner. So that remains the same. And here is what we added newly, right? So if you see here, we have basically set a new variable that is C1H, uh, the variable assigned to this particular line. So we are setting the C1H to true. So if you remember, that was a Boolean variable, true or false it's basically the visibility of the layer. So once if this line is equal, that is this logic here, if that stands true, we are basically turning on this particular line. So pretty simple, right? So if this scenario is true, we are telling the system that you need to turn on this particular line that we created here. So pretty simple. You need to add this for each and every scenario in each and every thing that we created here. So if I just close this, let's go to the second condition here. This is a condition where we are checking if C4 is equal to C5 is equal to C6, right? So this was the condition for that and we added this new thing here we are where we are setting the C4H true. So C4H, if you see here, this is the C4H and this becomes true and that line comes to visibility, right? And that's how you can see that line getting filled and you get to know that the player has won. So that is the thing you need to add and let's see that in action now. So I'll click on this frame, shift spacebar and that opens up this prototype mode here. And if I choose this and let's play a scenario right here. So now if I click here, this one will get filled and this particular line has to turn on, right? So as you can see, uh, once I clicked here, the line just turned on mentioning that this is uh, completed and player O is the winner. So that is basically how you do it. And along with that, you'll be confused. Why are these two new interactions available here, right? So along with this, you'll be seeing these two as well. So these two are here basically because we want to turn on the winner scenario, right? So let me just go back to the local variables here and you can see that there is a game over uh, variable and a game on variable, right? So if I turn this off, this part gets turned off and that is why I'm using a game on so that as far as the game is on, this one will stay true. And once the game is over, this will turn off, right? And this is the game over variable, which is linked to this particular frame, right? So let me just turn this off. So once a player wins, we are basically turning on this particular frame here. So this is linked to game over. So this one gets turned on and that's how you see this part. So in part one, I showed you that we will navigate them to a different screen. So you can either do that or you can uh, maintain everything in one particular frame and use multiple variables to handle it. So let me just turn this back on and let's see the logic that we added here. So I'm just selecting a cell once again, going to this first scenario here. So as you can see, once the player is one, we are also setting the game on variable to false. And that's how this gets turned off. And we are setting the game over variable to true. And that's how the other one which shows who's the winner gets turned on. So that's a complete logic here. And that's how you can create this complete game. And one more thing that you might be interested in knowing is how you can reset the game because once you play this and if you navigate them back here, the actions are going to remain as it is. So if you want to reset it, you have to reset all the variables, right? So for that reason, if I'll just show you what the interactions are right here. So I'll just turn this win button on, which says play again. And if I go to the prototype and see the interactions, so you can see these are all the things that you have to reset, right? So once you click on play again, you have to start from setting the current player to empty. This is basically basically all the values that you gave when you initially created the local variables. So all the default values, right? So the current player, we basically had set it to empty and that is what I'm setting it back again. And all these values, you need to set it back to each of those corresponding default values. And the winner variable again is set to empty and all the lines. So these are all the lines that we created. All are again set back to false and the game on and game over variables are again set to false and true. So you need to reset all of these. And once all of these are reset, you can navigate the user back to this frame one and it's again a fresh game again right because all the variables have been reset to their initial
initial default values that we actually gave while creating it. And once this is done, the user can play back again n number of times and keep looping as many times as they want. So I hope I've covered all the different scenarios and I hope you found this interesting and fun experiment to play around with the advanced prototyping features. And do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated with more such interesting fun videos. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.